Good evening and welcome to Coping with COVID. Updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. Good evening, I'm Trey Taylor and uh, thank you for joining us for this evening edition. Hopefully your kids are asleep, your little ones are asleep so that you can join in on this uh, really great, cause you're laughing Nicole, yours not asleep. No, of course not, because mom has something to do. <laughs> yeah. well, when, when Dr. Leisha and I were uh, doing the setup, I, she, she heard the screaming and hollering. I was like, oh, really? Y'all really going to do this at 9 o'clock tonight? <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> of course. But anyway, we are going to uh, attempt to have a child-free conversation <laughs> about the children. What about the babies? You know, Nicole and I were talking uh, a couple of weeks ago about about the behaviors of our children and uh, how they too are affected by what's going on in our world. And it's those little ones, particularly those who don't have the vocabulary to articulate what's going on with them. Those are the ones that are kind of brushed by the wayside. And we often will say, you know, they're just acting out or terrible twos or whatever. Mm -hmm. But especially since we're going through this right now, little ones have feelings and thoughts and they react to things too. So tonight we've got two amazing, um, uh, medical professionals that are going to share with us their area of expertise. Dr. Alicia Ellis Cook is a board certified child, adolescent and adult psychologist. She's in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Dr. Ebony Hollier is in Dallas and she's a developmental and behavioral pediatrician. And we're joined again by our good friend, uh, Dr. Nicole Edwards, a general practitioner family physician from right here in Columbia, South Carolina. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us on Coping with COVID. Thank you, you for know, having me. Oh, absolutely. I even got my little night voice. I'm realizing I've got my quiet storm voice going. <laughs> <laughs> and look, and I wanted to say this, Lisa looked like she she got her quiet storm stance on done. She look at her. She's ready, honey. <laughs> she got it. Lisa is always laid back. Wait till y'all hear her voice. It'll just oh, I know. Well, Right, 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 right. She's supposed to be on radio. Maybe you, I don't think she <laughs> mentioned calling, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Nicole, we were talking. So, I'll tell you, I've got an um, 18 month old and a four year old. And uh, for some odd reason, God thought that this was a time I needed <laughs> these two babies. But I noticed with, with, with Jew, with the four year old, just, and usually he's just a sweet, a kind little boy, but he's trying me, you know, and I was thinking first, okay, it's just four years old. He's just, you know, uh, kind of pushing up, trying to be the man. And then you were sharing with me that your little ones were having some behaviors. Tell us about that. Oh, is Nicole frozen? Oh, I think she is. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> well, until Nicole comes back to us, <laughs> she had mentioned that, um, Hers were uh, bedwetting, going kind of reverting back, bedwetting and doing some things. And just uh, through in the conversation, Dr. Ebony and Dr. Lee, are you back, Nicole? Oh, she's she's frozen again. Frozen again, yeah. Yeah, she came back a minute and is frozen again. When she comes back, we'll we'll bring her into the conversation. Okay. So Dr. Alicia and Dr. Ebony, is that um, common for children this age to kind of revert back or to sh exhibit some behaviors during times like these? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's super common. Um, and I know, Dr. Leish, you can kind of attest to this, too. Um, just personally, I have a two and a half year old. He was completely potty trained during the day. And then he's been out of school for the past six weeks or so. Wedding during the day, sleep regression, was sleeping through the night. Now he's up all this early morning awakening. So we've definitely seen some regression, both developmentally and behaviorally with him. But to your point, um, it's, it's very common for, for young kids for, for many reasons. During times of stress, like moving to a new house or having a new sibling, anything that causes a major change in their life can can result in some kind of regression in their development or behavior or both. Nicole, Nicole we're going to bring you back in because uh, you um, we lost you for a minute. Tell us about uh, your two. I mentioned that mm -hmm. uh, one of your children was starting back with bedwetting and, and Dr. Ebony said the same thing with hers. He was totally potty trained and then he reverted back. What's going on with your babies? Yeah, so uh, just 
all kinds of different um, symptoms. So we, we saw the bedwetting, which is absolutely, you know, and that one has been potty trained for years with no, that was our easy potty trainer, <laughs> right? Uh -oh. And so it's amazing, like, how did this happen, this type of regression? But even things like going back to the baby voice and and I'm like, where is it coming from? Like, wanting to be very affectionate. They always like to be, you know, held and hugged and touched, which is good, but it's been more so than usual. Um, so, and then I've, I've seen like a little mean streak in them too. Like, I'm like, this is not my usual babies. Like what's going on? Um, even things like um, sleepwalking, which is really? not, oh, wow. that's not like mine at all. Um, that was a, a prior issue that we had back when we had some mad noise and things issue, but now we're um, back to, you know, and then telling me, you know, I had a bad dream. I'm like, really? Okay. So we're having to, mm -hmm completely change up our nighttime routine and you know we're just we're trying to adjust um yeah. and make it work because but th i'm like these this is not my babies i don't i don't know what's yeah. going on um yeah. well i do know what's going on but I, and how old are they called five and seven so five it's, it's my five-year-old that was having some of the bed one now this week has been we've been a, a week now good since we've had to change up routines and things um the little mean streaks that that hasn't quite gone away yet uh and that's both <laughs> <laughs> I'm like really okay we're gonna have to put the the cooperation shirt back on or something but um yeah and then the nightmares that's that's been something new so um and then almost uh, like when they tell me what they're dreaming about they're dreaming about like stuff like bad guys and i'm like really yeah just weird yeah. stuff and i'm like are you watching something i mean i know they're not we're we're with them right. watching stuff on the internet so i don't even know where they're getting all this from um but it's it's yeah it's we, we got to address it we got to figure out what's going on um yeah. i've reached out to a couple of um of you know professionals who i know um and said hey what can we do to to address this with the kids um yeah. and you know talking with them like saying are you scared are you anxious right, um, right. what this means um but are you scared is something scaring you uh tell me about these dreams you know i'm just trying to get them to talk out their feelings more we've been doing a lot of um feeling drawings you know making masks and um you know pick up the mask that you're feeling today and you know just different things but we're just trying to um, adjust. I think a big thing too for them is um, that they haven't been able to articulate. They miss their friends, you know. Oh yeah, and yeah. they miss. Their mm -hmm. well, they're they're in taekwondo and soccer and swim yeah. lessons, and all of these, and now they're not doing anything, you know, except for yeah. playing with mommy and daddy in the backyard, and that's right, right. Fun. So it's all the things, you know. It's it's so yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Dr. Alicia, it's so interesting because I know we are told as parents to give our children a schedule, you know, to make sure they have a schedule. And then when the schedule is off, it, it really affects them, you know. Um, it does. Yeah. I think it's just important to remember uh, two things. One, we are in crisis. And whether your children are able to articulate it or not, they pick up on things, especially the signals that we sometimes inadvertently give. They may see mm -hmm. us, you know, wringing hands or rubbing our head or hear our tone of voice changing. Um, we may seem a bit more irritated with them or short tempered and mm -hmm. they pick up on those things. And their response isn't always going to be, hey, what's wrong with you, mommy? Right, but it's right. going to be clingy, whiny, I can't yeah. sleep. You know, I want mommy to sleep with me, being restless, um, the regression that we talked about with potty training. Um, we could see sleep changes, appetite changes, but there are a lot of things that they will express without using their words, but we can, mm -hmm. we know that there's something that's not right with him. And I think this is a time to be as comforting and reassuring as possible. So instead of timeouts, we need to do time ends. We need to love on each other and hug them and tell them it's gonna be okay, but we're gonna wash our hands and we can make songs out of hand washing. You know, we can sing our ABCs or count to 10 or 20, but we need to be reassuring and comforting as much as possible. 
Yeah, Dr. Alicia, you made such a good point because while you were sitting here talking about it, I thought to myself, at first you said, you know, they'll see us wringing our hands and and I was like, oh, I'm not doing that. But then you said, <laughs> and then they'll see us yeah. get short tempered. That part for me, I, you know, about week three, I was like, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was getting a little, it was, it was getting to me 24 seven with them here, not yes. being able to work. I mean, you know, as you know, you know, you're yes. uh, your teacher, your cafeteria worker, your, you know, you are, Everything. Um, yeah, you, you're a referee when you, you, when you cool. got to. And more than one. <laughs> bouncer. <laughs> I'm a bouncer. Yeah. Club yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so I do know there were times where I was I, I could and I'm not a stressful kind of person. I'm really, you know, pretty easy going. But mm -hmm. it was it was getting to me. It, it was it, and it yeah. wasn't the situation. It was them. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was it was just them getting to me. And, and I was tired, you know, so you make such a good point. And and I think um, we know. Dr. Ebony, that how we react affects our children. But then when we're reacting to them, I don't know that we're as conscientious about the fact that that they're just they're magnets, you know, and yeah. they're kind of bound, they're just going to bounce off what we give to them. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you made a good point about just increased stress and how different people manifest that yeah. and even if we have our best poker face on they still know our yeah. body language and not only what we're doing <clears throat> consciously or subconsciously the other thing is their life has changed mm -hmm. our lives have all changed and even mm -hmm. if you're not short-tempered they're not going to school they don't see their mm -hmm. friends and so you know that being said you know we just can't forget about that part, <laughs> but they do mirror what we do. If we're anxious, they tend to be more anxious, um, you know, like other big major crises like hurricanes and floods and things like that. What helps kids get through it and be resilient is how we respond, you know, right. making mm -hmm. sure that they know that they're safe and secure, even though the world is falling apart all around us, we are their safety net. And so that's the best thing we can do. And just to echo what Dr. Leisha and Dr. Nicole said, and you too, we just got to give that extra hug, give that extra reassurance. Um, <laughs> okay, just not too long, but today, my two-year-old fell out about everything. I don't <laughs> hurt. I don't want to use the potty. I don't want to eat lunch, but I'm like, you love to eat lunch. Like, what's going on? And so, honestly, literally, I'm just like, do you need some snuggles, as we call it? And so, he's like, yeah. You know, oh. and so, when we have these potty battles, you just got to reframe everything and just offer that extra layer of support. Do you need help? I'll help you, even though your child may not have needed help in that mm -hmm. area before. Mm -hmm. And people like would say, oh, you're spoiling them. You're coddling. Mm -hmm. them. They need it now. They, they need do. it. We need it. You know, we we do. Do. We yeah. Do. Yeah, that's that's so I love that because and because Ebony, when you said that, I thought about what Dr. Alicia did say you don't need a time out, you need a time in. And and there is a fine line between do you need to discipline this child for acting out or do they just need extra assurance that at least in this world of uncertainty, I know my relationship with this person is certain. You know, yes, this, this is stable and this is true and this is sure, regardless of whatever else goes on. Yeah. And I just wanted to add, like when your child may lash out or appear angry, just under that layer is a kiddo who has tears or who needs an extra hug. So what we see is them falling out or talking back or whatever. So if we can kind of give ourselves a mommy time out and step back a yeah. little bit and remember this is because of this whole situation and not do a timeout as you mentioned and just say okay right under that layer if you can get past that i know some people are old school like you're not gonna i know but you know just offer that extra layer of support because right under there is somebody that's scared and that's not necessarily feeling super secure in everything that's happening and they can't articulate that and they can't right. really say that you know, right. shoot, some adults can't articulate their feelings. So right. you, you gotta, <laughs> that the truth? yes, yes. We're talking about five year olds and 55 year olds can't, you know, so how do we expect a three or <laughs> five year old to? Dr. Alicia, you want to say something? Well, I was going to say, uh, Dr. Brene Brown, um, who does a lot of research um, mm -hmm. about shame and 
resilience and wholehearted living. She has a quote that's assume everyone is doing the best that they can. And I think Mm -hmm. it's such a relevant way to think about our interactions with our children, our significant others, our families, um, even ourselves sometimes, because again, we're all under duress. And at that moment, our typical go-to coping strategies are just not as sufficient as they used to be. And so I think that we need to extend grace and patience to everyone, especially our little ones who can't articulate their feelings, but also to ourselves as mommies, because we can beat ourselves up about losing our tempers or because, you know, we're feeling overwhelmed or because we complained about making breakfast, lunch, and dinner and 17 snacks in between, you know, (laughs) We're feeling upset mm-hmm. about about <laughs> you know unrealistic expectations that we have for ourselves, right, right. Um, and so I just I think that's such a critical point that the way that we are effective as parents starts with our ability to take care of ourselves emotionally. Oh, yeah. you're right. You're right. Yeah, but we don't. Yeah, go ahead, Nicole. I, I read this great book called "Ditch the Mommy Guilt." I wonder where I got that from. Hey. <laughs> oh, that Lisa's book. A lady named Doctor <laughs> um, but I had to kind of re- refer back to it this week because, or last week or two weeks ago, whenever that was, because the first thing I thought of when um, my daughter had the accident was, what am I doing wrong? Like, right. what? Mm. I thought, I did, I thought we were wrong. Yeah. And so it, it hit me and I had to check yeah. myself like, okay, let me put my feelings up to the door right now. This has nothing to do with me. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to ditch the mommy gill and I'm going to figure out what's going on with my child, right? Yeah. Because it has nothing to do with me. And I think we do a lot that a lot. We take things personal and it really yeah. has nothing to do with the, what they say, I bet you think the song is about you. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I, think, I think another thing is, I was thinking when we were talking before is that kids have a great ability to pick up on uh, spirits and yes. about yes. on feelings, yes. even though they might not know what's going on, they can feel what's going on. So oh, they do. That's a reminder for me too, to sometimes turn off the TV, turn off the news, be careful what I'm speaking about on the phone yep. because they can yep. hear yep. everything that I'm yep. saying. And if they can't hear it or, you know, if they don't hear um, the words, they feel what I'm feeling when I'm on the phone or when I'm talking to my husband mm-hmm. or when I'm, you know, and so I have to be mm-hmm. careful to disconnect from everything else for a little bit and just really connect to my Self, but also to them. Um, and, you know, Ellen came to me, my son came to me uh, one time last week. He said, Mommy, do you just need a hug? And I'm like, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> like, Mom can always use a hug. Like, you don't yeah. ever have to, come on, give Mommy a hug. And he gave me the best hug, you know. So they, they, they're picking up on our, mm-hmm. um, on our feelings and our anxiety. And our energy. Mm-hmm. They do. They absolutely they do. Us to check ourselves too, mm-hmm. yeah. right. to help them. Absolutely. Yeah. Other oh, thing yeah. I just wanted to say, if I could, um, you know, sometimes it happens, even though we try our best to stay calm, even the best of us can just, you know, get upset or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's also too important to recognize and acknowledge that you were wrong. Mm-hmm. Like if you snap at oh, your yeah. little one to oh, say, yeah. I'm sorry, you know, that goes a long way. We all make mistakes. We all do the best we can. So just to articulate that, not just to be respectful of your child, but also to model to them that, you know, they should admit when they're wrong and to be able to apologize to others when they've hurt them. Yeah, that's so good. Aluchi Emanuel says this great information. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. So, uh, is that your friend, Dr. Ebony? You just laughed. Uh, like, all of us. All of our friends. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Okay. <laughs> And um, I, yeah, I would echo that. Like, um, it just, it's very, it's, it, you know, we need to model appropriate coping strategies, healthy communication. And that also mm-hmm. says, you know what, I can apologize. It doesn't mean I'm a bad person. I can say, you know what, mommy had a rough day. Mommy lost, you know, lost her temper. Mm-hmm. Mommy is sorry. Um, mommy's going to work on it, hug it out. Um, but that we, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. We're human. We yeah. apologize. Then we practice forgiveness, which is another good thing for our children to learn. And we keep it moving because that's what love looks like. You know, love isn't always yeah. pretty. Right. Sometimes we'll have some hiccups and. Right. And and in this, like you said, this is this is a moment where you are teaching life skills. 
You are yeah. teaching real life skills, even mm -hmm. to the babies who as we all know are sponges yeah. right now. They and, and they are learning how to react mm -hmm. based on you. We're having a mm -hmm. great conversation. Man, let me tell you something. I'm learning so much right now. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I mean, I am. You know, and it's stuff that you kind of know, but you always mm -hmm. need a refresher course in the moment. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Alicia Ellis Cox is a board certified child, adolescent and adult psychologist. She's out of Birmingham, Alabama. Also, Dr. Ebony Hollier is in Dallas. She's a developmental and behavioral pediatrician and a general practitioner, family physician. Dr. Nicole Edwards joins us from Columbia, South Carolina. Thank you so much for joining us on Coping with COVID. We're having a great conversation about how to handle your young child who may not be able to articulate their feelings during a stressful time. Of course, we're dealing with COVID right now and our children are out of their regular routine and so are we. So I love um, Dr. Alicia and Dr. Emily, the three of you, even Dr. Nicole, you say, to thine own self be true first. We've got to check ourselves. We've got to take care of ourselves. But how many times as mothers, grandmothers, aunties, wh whoever, we're so busy taking care of everybody else. We don't <laughs> yeah. take care of ourselves. And of course, that directly affects everything and everybody else. Absolutely. It does indeed. Yeah. So go ahead. You want to say something? Oh, I was going to say, yeah, I'm, I'm a firm proponent of, of self-care and obviously there are no spa days. Um, yeah. <laughs> I guess Girl, unless you're in Georgia, but... Oh, girl, stop. I need to go to Atlanta and get. <laughs> and nobody should go. I'm just, let me just say, stay, mm -hmm. stay put and don't go to that bastion of. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, but Dr. Leisha, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I rediscovered the beauty of a bath. I'm a shower girl. And, um, <laughs> I've been bathing the kids. And one day, a couple of weeks ago, that daggone bath water looked so good to me. <laughs> and they were just having a ball with the suds. And when I put them to bed, I ran a bath, you know, had the lights down, had my little Gregory Porter on. And girl, let me tell you something. I have discovered the beauty of a daggone bath, you know, just. I love it. And, and every week, um, you know, I'm not saying I only take a bath on Sunday, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Just say that, but I, it, it's just the because, like you said, you you got to find it where you can find it, and it's different mm -hmm. things, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, and for me, it was just the emerging, just emerging my body in that water. And you know, I think as we all know, as spiritual women, water is so spiritual. It's cleansing. It's um releasing. It's the whole concept of wade in the water. Take me to the water. It's a, it's a, I don't know, you know, the baptism of the soul. So I, my goodness. And I just kept, you know, the water would get cold and I just put more of the hot water in and put more hot mm -hmm. water in. So that for me, Dr. Leisha has been my just, you know, that's been my release. That's been my spa yeah. day, so to speak. Yeah, I think it's really important too because the kids like for today Tatum asked me, "Mommy, do you have to go to work again?" And I inadvertently said, "That's all mommy does is work and home." And then I had to catch myself, like, "Okay, I yeah. can't, can't do that, right? That's right. that is all mommy does is work and home, right? But you've got to find something else to do. So, right. you know, a walk, going out to the garden, but something, and then involve the kids too. They want to do those things too. Yeah. Uh, they We've been doing we've been trying to do a walk a day with the kids and they're they're enjoying uh -huh. that. Um, we didn't get one in today. Maybe that's why they're kind of <laughs> acting a little crazy today. But, you know, you, you got you got to find something, something yeah. to do. Yeah. And I've, been, right. I've been cooking with my oldest. I have three children, five, uh, nine and 12. And my oldest is 12. So we've been making now they're not healthy, but they sure are tasty. <laughs> Um, so we've made some garlic knots and some cinnamon oh, twists. Yeah. And then with my nine-year-old. Oh, I think we lost Dr. Alicia again. Uh -oh. Yeah. Go ahead, Dr. Ebony. Um, you can pick up one. Yeah. Go. Oh, she's back. She's back. Oh, sorry. So yeah. I said my nine-year-old, we go for a walk because he needs to get outside and 
get his Overwhelm. blood flowing yeah. and get moving. And so that really helps him significantly and us because we get to mm-hmm. chat and talk about our feelings and it's really a good time for us to spend together. Yeah, I love that evening walk. We we we've been do we've been doing an evening Us walk too. <laughs> yeah. Well, after dinner, we'll say, okay, let's go for a walk. You know, sometimes the baby will get on her little bike, and sometimes I'll put her in the yeah. stroller. Sometimes everybody's walking. Sometimes Jew will get on his bike. You know, but we're walking around the block and and just enjoying the outside and and just releasing and talking about the day. And um, I know they look forward to it, and I look forward to it also. You know, absolutely. So, Ebony, what are some things that um, you maybe are working on with your children and that you suggest to your patients to do uh, during this time? You know, Alicia said, uh, give yourself grace, which is one great tip. I love that. I've got to get that book because we are so hard on ourselves. I know I am. We're hard on ourselves, you know. And then the other thing, um, give yourself that break, that that spa time, that whatever you need to do, whether it's, I don't know, a glass of wine, a bath, whatever it is you need to do, do what you need to do, do take some time to exercise or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but then what is it, and, and Leisha mentioned a couple of things to really kind of communicate, ways to communicate with your little ones. What are some suggestions you can give us also, Dr. Ebony? In terms of ways to communicate with them now okay. or just generally? Okay, so I think uh, the most important thing is to always be very mindful to communicate in a manner that they can understand. Um, And I mean, a couple of things by that. One, um, where their language level is. You know, so you said you have an 18 month old. Obviously, you've got to talk very differently to your 18 month old than your four year old. And so, you know, keeping that in mind um, and also changing the manner you speak depending on the situation. You know, right now we want to be super nurturing, super supportive, encouraging, and all of that. But then um, just to kind of think about uh, Gary Chapman's love languages. Yes. You know, as adults, yes. we have it. Kids have love languages too. Mm-hmm. So if you have one that's, you know, the hugger, then giving them that extra physical connection during the day or, you know, you know, acts of kindness or whatever it is for your child, being able to communicate to them in a way that they understand and in a way that they receive love is hugely important. Um, And then just on a more general note, I just want to say for the little ones specifically, having some kind of structure and routine in their day Mm -hmm. is paramount um, because it helps them to feel safe and secure. Now, I know that people are working from home and got a bunch of stuff. So I'm not saying to do this at 915, do this at 945. That's not what I mean. What I mean, but I, uh, <laughs> but what I mean is if you can do bedtime and a bedtime routine, for example, if you go for a walk every day after dinner, if there are certain key points during the day that your child can look forward to, then kind of having some of that consistency and routine in place is so important um, for your their overall well-being and their sense of security. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit more about that. But first, I want to say uh, thank you to Tracy for uh, watching. He, she says, hey, docs, what useful information about how we can help our kids. Thank you so much for uh, watching. So you say have a schedule. Now, should you um, adhere to that schedule, even if the child says, well, maybe I don't want to do this this time? Because we had to do that. We at, By week two, we had a schedule. We were up about 7, 7.30. We'd eat breakfast. Um, we ended up um, making this schedule game called Boom Shakalaka. It's, it's, it's a game. I said, <laughs> that sounds I, I said yeah. Boom Shakalaka to Jew, the, the fourth, four-year-old one day, and he had never heard. It's like, what is Boom Shakalaka? I said, well, it's like right on, you know, but yeah. So we started playing this, this Boom Shakalaka. So this is Boom and this uh, um, elbow bump is Shakalaka. If he gets it, we do it with a splash card. So if he would get the color right, he'd get a Boom. If he got the shape right, he'd get a Shakalaka. And then he'd get, a, a, he'd get a pistachio or grape or something, you know. So anyway, so we ended up doing boom chocolate. So we do boom chocolate at nine. Okay. We come back upstairs. A girl had to get creative. We had to, we, because awesome. we had to do these flashcards and they, you know, he, he, he was getting bored with them. So, yeah. but anyway, that came from the Holy Ghost. So anyway, we, <laughs> we, we come upstairs, you know, make up the bed. Um, but, and I found some uh, kids yoga cause I've been wanting to do some yoga, found mm-hmm, some kids mm-hmm. yoga. We do some kids yoga. Sometimes they were in it. Sometimes they wouldn't, but I'd still do it cause I needed it. And, mm-hmm. um, and then by that time it was time for lunch. We do lunch. I'd give them yeah. a little, 
you know, playtime, the baby would go down. Jewel would never take a nap. He never did. He, he's, he's not taking a nap, but he took one at school. So anyway, so we had a schedule, but I noticed there were times when he was like, well, Tutu, I don't want to do boom shakalaka. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I pushed him to do it because we needed to get those flashcards in. And sometimes I let him go. So do you adhere to the schedule even if they don't want to do it? Or do you just I let it kind of get it flexible? I think it's both. Um, and I love what you did. You realized that he was getting bored. And so you changed it up and you figured mm -hmm. out something that captured his interest better. That's huge. But what I think is that, especially with little ones offering choices, like if you okay. have to get through those flashcards, you can say, would you like to do boom shakalaka <laughs> or would you like to do Simon Says with the oh, flashcards like or whatever? Okay, yeah. You know, so if you allow them choices, then you're giving them some control over the situation rather than you just dictating what right, it is. And right, so right. you can get the activity done but give them some choices perhaps, you know, um, and then say for instance, you wanna do some arts and crafts, let them pick if they wanna paint or if they wanna use crayons, you know, you're still gonna get your artwork in, but give them some leverage and some ability to make choices. Um, it's gonna go a long way in those power struggles and just the overall sense of just peace in the house. Everybody will have a better day. You're not fighting about everything. This is really a time to just extend grace, um, pick your battles. If they're not running out into the street and going to get hit <laughs> by a car, it's yeah. probably not that big of a deal right now. Right. Everybody has a different approach. That's mine <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Dr. Leisha, do you uh, advise that you talk to them about what is going on? I mean, you know, I ended up, you know, because I had to explain why isn't anything open? He was like, is is libraries not open? No, honey, we can't go to the library. Chuck E. Cheese? No, no, honey, we can't go there. You know, so we ended up talking about, you know, people are getting sick. It's a virus and uh, we're in because you know, and you can't go close to people. This is, you know, the whole mass thing. So I had to explain it to him. Is is that, do you suggest telling the kids exactly what's going on? I guess, like Ebony said, in a way that they can understand it. I do think it's important to use developmentally appropriate language and to talk to them and not avoid difficult conversations. Um, but the other thing I think to, that's really important to pair with that is to be reassuring. Okay. And so, these are the things that we're doing to stay safe. See, we get to wash our hands together and we can call our friends and family on FaceTime or mm -hmm. you know, on the phone, um, but we're gonna keep ourselves safe because we are not going to go and hug everybody even though we want to, but mm -hmm. we, can, we can call them on the phone because you, you don't want them to get overwhelmed mm -hmm. by you know, this um, barrage of information yeah, that yeah. you're trying to give to educate because ultimately we're about being promoting safety, health and well-being, and just being comforting for our for our babies. Yeah. Yeah. So Nicole, how have you um kind of worked through your issues with your two, your five and seven year old? So I'm I'm very um open with them on their age level. So they know that there's a virus going on. Uh, they ask questions, you know, uh, what is a virus? I had to explain to them what a virus, my, my kids, I think they're five and seven, but they've been here before. So I, <laughs> um, they're deep. Okay. So, but they, they want to know about the virus. They want to yeah. know about, you know, what's going on. Why can't we, and then Tatum, she's so funny. My five-year-old, she's, she'll, she'll say to my son, my son, she Ellington, we can't, it's the virus. Okay. <laughs> so she, they're aware of what's going on. Um, we went to a, um, a walking trail, a walking, uh, walking thing at, at a school. Of course, nobody was there. So mm -hmm. we were walking around. And so we, that was kind of our spot. Well, one day we went there and there was another parent and their kid there. And so we had to come up with some rules before we even got out the car. Okay. Here's the rules. This is what we're going to be. Able to, you can stay on the path. You cannot go into the grass. You cannot go, you know, if somebody comes to talk to you, you have to tell them, 
that you can't play with them. You know, you can't touch anything. You can't, they can't come up to you. They can't, you can't share your bike. You can't share your uh, scooter with them. And so, um, you know, my son kind of forgot a little bit and the little boy was running over to him and, you know, mommy had to kind of step in for a second be like, uh, excuse me, can you, mm -mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> right. And so you had to explain, remind him why, you know, and that's when Tatum was like, Ellington, it's the virus. I was like, okay. <laughs> Right. Um, but so I've just I've tried to be very uh, open and transparent. The hardest part, uh, one of the hardest parts for me is answering some of the questions that come out of the blue um, where you're like, yeah. where did that come from? Um, yeah. I guess that would be another uh, form of, of their they're trying to deal with it and trying to handle it. And probably something that they probably have heard us talk yeah, about. Yeah. Um, for example, they I heard them in conversation. They were talking about um coach coaches um my sister's dog that died a couple years ago and they were asking is coach up in heaven is he with the people with the virus and i was like first of all how do you know about people with the virus in heaven okay let's talk about this right and so i'm having no. to like, deal with this in my own self like okay how much do we give um how much information usually you know just a sentence or two and then they're ready to move on to the next the next thing so you, we also can't be afraid as parents right right right, right. As if they hear more than we than they're letting on um yeah. and so we know um but we have to answer their questions as they come uh, on the, on their level of course and then if they want to know more they'll ask more and then yeah. hopefully it won't be too yeah. much so that's and been I'm my sure being open and honest with them and talking with them and like you said uh, dr ebony you know apologizing if i do you know go off or, you know, have a little moment and, you know, it happens. and then I'm gonna come mm -hmm. back. And, uh, whew, let's start all over again. Right. Yeah. And, yeah so that's, and that's I love that you answer um, honestly and openly. The worst thing to do is to avoid it completely because then right. they think it's not safe to ask you right. things or right. to talk to you about it. You're setting a um, precedence for, for the don't future. Yeah. yeah. Right. You don't right. have to right. talk about transmission and all this mm -hmm. other stuff. Answer what they ask you in a way that they can understand, but be careful not to overshare because you can make them scared to, to breathe or walk out of the house and you don't want that either, you know, right. so. Yeah, we're uh, talking to mm -hmm. Dr. Leisha Ellis Cox from Birmingham. She's a board certified child adolescent adult and a child psychologist. And also from Dallas, Texas, Dr. Ebony Hollier, developmental and behavioral pediatrician. And of course, from here in Columbia, South Carolina, general practitioner, Dr. Nicole Edwards. And we're uh, talking about how to converse and how to deal with your young child who may be exhibiting some unusual behaviors and you're wondering what in the world is going on and it may be just that they are coping with COVID. Want to say hi to Hoda and Muhammad. Thank you so much for uh, watching. And uh, please, everyone that is watching, please share this great information out because this is some great information. Just like I said, this is just practical stuff, Dr. Leisha, Dr. Ebony and Dr. Uh, Edwards about how to talk to, how to communicate with our children. And Dr. Alicia, I love that you say, um, you know, what Brene Brown said. I, I used to, um, well, I still know the person say, I know someone that she said, everybody here is doing the right thing, you know, and you just come from yeah. that standpoint that no one is trying to be ugly or disrespectful or everybody is just trying to just cope the way we can cope at this point. And as the adult, we've got to recognize that we are in control. And if we stay in control, then we can control the situation. Absolutely. Yeah. And as I think um, someone said earlier, like if we have her, our own issues yeah. managing emotions at times, why would we expect a two-year-old to do any better? Yeah. You know? So I think Absolutely. we have to adjust our expectations for them, especially. And again, it's about creating a safe, environment for our children because they do best when they feel safe, secure, reassured, and loved. And, and that's that's, that's our primary want. responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't that what we want? Yeah. It is. I just love that you, you know, you even said, you know, when they start acting out or whatever, you just say, you know, honey, do you need a hug? You know, can I don't not to respond in anger, not to respond. Or, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? You know, but to respond with, you know, I love you. I love you so much. You know, it's so funny when I, I remember before this, before my nerves were afraid, <laughs> I used uh -oh. to respond that way. You know, I did. I remember, you know, when you with a five or four year old would, you know, kind of come at me with behavior and I would just look at him and smile. 
<laughs> and he said, don't smile at me, Tutu. Why are you smiling? I said, because I love you. You know, I mm -hmm. love you. And then it would break, you know, when he would smile back. So, but I do want to ask, so what do you do when they don't go, you know, girls, because girl, Alicia, where was your advice when they were screaming when we were setting up? When they, when I couldn't get these little mongrels to sleep at nine o'clock and they should be asleep. What do you do there? I mean, because they, I put them to sleep at eight o'clock. At eight o'clock, it's time for bed. You know, we're starting right after we come from our walk. So at seven o'clock, we'll take a bath or whatever. We'll put on, you know, pajamas. Uh, tonight, you know, they talked on the phone, FaceTime, and then it's a little TV time. We say our prayers. We in the bed. Now, it's, you know, sometimes they'll fall out. Sometimes they'll just lay there. But then there are times, and again, it's been, you know, the last couple of weeks where they just, you know, they just won't go down. They just won't go down. I mean, you know, the 18 month old is screaming and Jew is just jumping all over the bed. And and I'm saying, honey, you got to go to sleep. You got to go to sleep. You know, no, no snack tomorrow. No uh, yogurt almonds tomorrow. If, if you don't go to sleep, you know, what do you do there? <laughs> Asking for a friend named Trey Taylor. <laughs> so it might be, hey, let's have story time. Try and distract. Yeah. Um, and if they still have a case of the wiggle worms, I'm like, dance party, you know, just dance it out because okay. you're not okay. going to get, unless you slip somebody melatonin, <laughs> they might not be able to settle down. They may just have nervous right, energy right. that's going on. And rather than fighting with more and more threats, yeah. you know, um, yeah. you, you just have to distract and shift your approach. And so a dance party will help them get the wiggles out. Um, it's fun. Who doesn't like good music? Yeah, she's she's frozen. Frozen. I think kind of setting up the bedtime. You know, baby shark. Oh, I keep getting oh, frozen. Back. Sorry. Yeah, no, <laughs> you're back. So come on. Yeah. Well, I was just saying, yeah, some baby shark. You know, <laughs> have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. I like to take a little bit of a different approach. Like if the issue is that they're having um, difficulty settling, then um, sometimes you could try. It just depends because everybody's different. Every family's different. All kids are different. But like if you could try a more calming sort of approach to it, um, for example, you have your um, walk after dinner that you guys are having, um, you know, perhaps if you had your bath time and then after that, maybe relaxing music, story time, that kind of thing. Um, when kids have trouble sleeping, I often ask that parents don't rough house, don't offer screen time, like an hour before bed, maybe just soft music. Dancing is good, but I would do just the audio version um, because sometimes just the blue lights can just activate their little brains and shift their melatonin and make it harder to get to sleep. And so I think you just got to step back. And then if you do deliver consequences, like you mentioned, no yogurt and almonds tomorrow, I would be a consequence. Like right. if you have a lovey that they like to sleep with, we're going to take that out and lock the door for mm -hmm. a minute and then let you regroup. You know, like right. our, because little ones, they don't, they can't see it tomorrow. You need an yeah. immediate consequence to kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that because everything everything is yesterday. Did this happen yesterday? No, that was two weeks ago. So I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. eighteen months old. <laughs> but but you know, Doctor Emily, you make a good point because I I learned a couple of weeks ago that we cannot watch Power Rangers before he Juju goes to bed because <laughs> right. that's just too much stimuli. That is just too much stimuli. You know, I think we also have to realize too in all of this is that um, these are still humans, right? And just like we react to the foods that we eat. We react to activity. We react to um, blue lights, like Dr. Ebony was just talking about. So right now with our schedules being off and everybody's kind of off, uh, we have to go with graces and be well and remember that their schedules are can also be off. But we also, kids are getting, right now, they're getting a lot of screen time because we are doing more FaceTime, because we are mm -hmm. doing more YouTube, and Baby Shark. And so they're getting all of those waves and all of that blue light. And we have to remember that that can also affect their brain waves and that can and also affect their, um, their, you know, their serotonin levels and their dopamine levels. And so they might be on go because of all of the screen time. I mean, you know, usually as pediatricians and as family doctors, we, we've been teaching parents to limit our kids' screen time. But over the past month to to four to six weeks, nobody's limiting screen time, right? Everybody, <laughs> right. we're all in like 
almost, you know, 18 hours out of a day. Why? Because we're working on a screen. We're we're socially right. not distant, right, on a screen. So we're mm-hmm. doing everything on a screen. We have to remember how that can also affect kids and their minds. And so we have to remember that. So sometimes we also might need a little bit Maybe we do maybe need a little melatonin or something to kind of tone things down, a little supplement. We also have to make sure that we're, you know, because they're eating a lot more junk food because we're all home and we're all eating a lot more junk food. How that also affects our bodies as well. Right. Um, are they are we getting an, are they hydrated enough? Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, yes, the bedwetting and things could be from anxiety, but could it also be from some dehydration because they're drinking more Gatorade or soda during the day and, and not as much water as they used to be drinking. So we have to think yeah. of things theologically too because these are i mean they're children but they're humans right and yeah, so we have yeah. to also think about how all of this is affecting their 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 bodies and their makeup yeah dr mm-hmm. Leisha ellis cox is with us she's a board certified child adolescent and adult psychologist in birmingham dr ebony holland is in houston not dallas i just moved her developmental and behavioral <laughs> pediatrician and uh, dr nicole edwards is uh here in columbia south carolina ladies we have a question from Amina Moha. And uh, she says, uh, her son has been so sad for not being able to play with his friends and not going to school. He's been asking questions regarding the end of the world. He believes things will never be the same. She wants to know, uh, her son is eight. How do sh- does she answer him? She says she's struggling with this. She said she can't seem to ease his feelings at all. He keeps wondering why, why we're going through this. Amina, thank you so much for your question. Ladies. First question is, I wonder how old is her son? Eight years old. old? Okay. So at that age, you know, they really know a lot more than we probably give them credit for. And I think you guys have kids closer to this age, so y'all definitely jump in. But I think just being honest and just saying that we're not exactly sure when all of this will end because we are not sure. So I think it's important to be honest because, you know, even though we try to limit screen time, kids are still exposed to media. They're still talking to family and friends, you know, virtually. Um, And so just being honest, but also, again, just not oversharing, being careful not to be too glum and scaring um, the child, but definitely just keep reassuring, keep offering those extra hugs, keep the lines of communication open so that he will continue to share his fears with you. And you just explain um, in a way that he can understand and keep kind of coming back to it and just being there. And for that particular child and every child, really, I would be sure to increase one on one time where you can just have time to sit and just hang out, listen to music, whatever he would like to do. And then you can hear more about exactly what he's feeling and then seeing how he's progressing as you work through it together with him. Yeah, thank you, Ebony. Dr. Leisha. I think it's important to validate his feelings um, that yeah. there is so much that's going on and it it is frustrating and sometimes it is scary um, with what's happening. And I'm so glad that you, you know, felt comfortable talking to mommy about this. Yeah. I think that's really important. Um, and to Dr. Ebony's point that there are a lot of things that, that we don't know, but I think there are some things that we can do and that's we can, you know, write letters to our friends. We can call our friends. And let's think about some of the things that we're able to do. So, Mm -hmm. you know what, we can go outside and let's have some outside time or you all can come up with some other things that he likes to do that you can pick to do together um, to help try and normalize um, some of what's going on. Um, And then as always, just be reassuring and talking about, we're just trying to be safe and this will end. We don't know when, but it's gonna end and um, we'll be able to hopefully see our friends, um, you know, soon. Uh, Yeah. Dr. Alicia Ellis Cox, uh, Dr. Ebony Hollier, thank you so much. Amina, what are you saying to your son? Um, Thank you so much for the the question. I'd love to know what you're communicating with him so that maybe these ladies can kind of help you, um, uh, you know, alter that conversation. I hear my four-year-old in the background, so I'm sure he'll come upstairs at any minute. So (laughs) you know what's going on. We'll just say hi. (laughs) Say hi. (laughs) 
<laughs> so anyway, so um, so yeah, that that's interesting. Yeah, just uh, you know, a lot of kids are you know feeling sad too and wondering what's going on and and don't understand. He's eight years old, so um, you guys say just the same thing. Just kind of reassure him that everything's okay. Um, and, and I love that both of you say, you know, the world may be changing, but I still love you and uh, everything is fine where we are. So, yeah. And, and sometimes uh, it's maybe reframing instead of saying that everything is OK, we can be, you know, even bringing it back to a level of they are. So when my kids were asking me what was going on, I was like, but do you remember that time that you were sick? You remember how bad you felt when you were sick? Right. So there's a lot of people in the world right now that are feeling sick. And so by staying at home, we're going to try our best to make sure that we don't make other people sick and that those people don't make other people sick. So you got to kind of yeah. break it down on something that they can understand and that they can. Yeah. Comprehend. Oh, and then it's like, oh, yeah. So people are getting sick. OK, so if we stay home, then we won't make people sick. OK, I get it. Right. And so that's how we're kind of. OK, we're staying home right now because we don't want people to get sick. No, we can't go see CC and Bampa because we don't want yeah. them germs and we don't want them to get sick. Right. So maybe yeah. we can do something different. So like this past weekend, we did um, a drive by. We went and we dropped off some some like a little gift package. And then we sat outside in the car and we waved from the car um, and we just did kind of a drive by so that they could still see them. Um, it was different from FaceTime. You know, at least they were seeing them. Um, but we were, you know, we were in the car. They were still on the porch. And so it was different, though. But just finding new ways of um, reshaping things. And I've seen that, um, for example, tomorrow is my my daughter's best friend's birthday. We're doing a drive by. Um, birthday parade for her. You know, everybody's okay. making signs and, and, the, and we're going to just drive by and everybody's going to, you know, play happy birthday music. And so just trying to find a new normal, but making making it understandable for uh, an eight year old. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it says that she has been uh, telling him that uh, God is in control and they'll get through this together. She's been praying. That's and perfect. Yeah. yeah. That's a yeah. perfect response. And, and you and know, also, Ms. Mm -hmm. Amina, let, let your son pray and you will be yes. so, I've listened yes. to him. You'll learn a lot. <laughs> oh my goodness. So our yeah. next door neighbor, um, this past week, the ambulance came with, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what happened, but they, you know, and of course when mm -hmm. the fire truck came, um, you know, the kids wanted to come outside and see the fire truck and everything. And then, so Tatum was like, what's wrong with our neighbor? And I was like, I don't know, but why don't we pray? And I promise you, Tatum prayed heaven down. <laughs> and then oh, he even it. asked me, um, was it yesterday or today? Um, can we still, can we still pray for him? And I was like, yeah, oh, you can no. pray for him. You I just you stretch your hands and pray right. and God will yeah. send, you know, God can Amen. still, you know, and so, Amina, let your son pray. I'm telling you. Oh, I love your that. Beautiful, yes. beautiful idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love that. yeah. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Amina says, thank you for talking with me and making me understand what to do. She said she appreciates you ladies so much. Thank you, Amina, for uh, trusting these ladies to even share that information. You know, that's what we're, that's what people are here for. She said she'll definitely let him lead the prayers. Yeah. I, that's, I love that's that. Great. Yeah, I love that too. We do that. We um, pray. Um, you know, of course, we you know we pray at night. We pray in the morning. And uh, mm -hmm. and Ju Julius, who is as y'all saw his little curly hair, he, he uh, <laughs> you know he he leads the prayer for us. He leads the wow. grace, and then he'll either lead the morning prayer or or the evening prayer. So, yeah. and again, that's just also teaching them. And and, and um, nurturing their relationship, their spiritual relationship. Right. She said, I mean, it's, it's a great, great idea. Jen Mitchell, thank you so much for joining us. She said, he says, uh, train up a child in the way that yeah. he should go. So Holden mm -hmm. Muhammad says, uh, hello to everyone once again. Hi to uh, Dr. Peace. Dr. Peace, thank you for joining us once again. She was with us last week on a, a great mm -hmm. session on uh, how to, um, to self isolate, so. No, the TV is off. Okay, you're supposed to be asleep. That's why the TV's off. <laughs> the TV's off. It is what time is it? It's 10 o'clock. You need to come see what you were up to. I know. <laughs> you say hi to everybody. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> He's like, I'm making my cameo. He's fully No, no. <laughs> 
So we're talking to Dr. Ellis Cox, a board-certified child, adolescent, and adult psychologist, psychiatrist in Birmingham in uh, Houston. Dr. Ebony Hollier is with us, developmental and behavioral pediatrician and a general practitioner, family physician in Columbia, South Carolina. Dr. Nicole Edwards has joined us. And uh, we've been having a great conversation on, uh, oh, thank you, Amina. He's okay. <laughs> she says, Amina says, you're such a cutie. So thank you. Yes, he is. <laughs> he I. <laughs> so um, we've been having a great conversation on how to talk to your children uh, during stressful times. And, you know, not only now during this COVID, I mean, you know, there could be an illness or a death in the family, their uh, financial situations, whatever the situation is. I mean, life is going to happen. And when it happens, mm -hmm. uh, I think these ladies mm -hmm. are saying, you know, first we got to get ourselves together as the adult, uh, because our yes. emotional, spiritual, our energy, as Nicole said, actually affects, mm -hmm. affects yeah. our children because they pick up on that. In closing, um, uh, Dr. Leisha, can uh, can you share some information with us in closing? Um, I would just say this is a difficult time for. Uh oh, everyone, oh. but this lose hope. Oh, oh did I? Oh, I no, you're back. I'm we're sorry. Back. <laughs> okay, I said just it's a difficult time for everyone, but stay encouraged and know that you are doing your best as a mommy, and um, that as long as you are working on trying to make sure that you yourself are doing okay, then it allows you to be present for your children. But if you need help, whether for yourself or you feel like your child needs help feel free to reach out to your pediatrician or your family mm -hmm. practice physician or a therapist or a psychiatrist. Don't be afraid to get help because this is for the long haul. We're trying to help oh. us to cope and manage for the days, months, and years to come. And there's courage when you reach out and say, you know what, I don't have this all together and right. I need to get some help. Right. Leisha, if people want to contact you, how can they do that? So you can follow me on Facebook um, at my Dr. Leisha page. Um, you can email me at hello at drleisha.com. And I'm on IG as well. And I have a, a blog at drleisha.com. Tell us about your book. So I've actually written two books. The first is Ditch the Mommy Guilt, A Blueprint for the Modern Mommy, because as mamas, we succumb to the pressures yeah. of guilt if we're not careful. Yeah. So it gives you know, very easy to apply strategies to help you manage mommy guilt. And then I wrote a children's book called The Love Garden, which is about where babies are in heaven with God before they are in mommy's tummies or with or brought to a family's home. Great. So great. our purpose, um, that God has a purpose for our lives even before we're born. Wow. Love that. Love that. And how can people get um, access to those uh, publications? Um, my website, DrLisha.com, um, has the links for both of those books. Okay, awesome. And Dr. Ebony Hollier, uh, closing statements and how people can contact you, please. Sure, of course. Um, I think it's just so important to just be kind and gentle with yourself and with your children. Um, and then just to be grateful. Like, it's so much that is going wrong. I think it's important to try to really be mindful of things that are going right and that we can be grateful for and practice gratitude. Um, that, that's, those are really the closing uh, comments I wanted to make. And then I have a book. It's the seven <laughs> practices of exceptional parents where we I kind of talk about those things that kind of help us guide our way through parenthood. Um, and so you can definitely find me on social media at Dr. Ebony That's D R E B O N I. P E D S. And to get the book, you can go to my website, Dr. Ebony Awesome. Awesome. And Nicole. All right. So I wanted to first um, give big ups to single moms out there because I mm. think, I don't know how y'all do it. I'm going to just be <laughs> honest, okay. Um, no, and so y'all, because wow. Um, and so if you guys, if you're a single mom or um, grandma or, and, and, but you're by, you're in this by yourself, know that it might feel like you're by yourself, but you're not by yourself. There's probably communities out there, um, social media places that you can reach out. Um, there's some great 
uh, you know, motherhood unapologetically. And um, uh, Dr. Ebony has um, a mommy group as well. But there are mommy groups that you can reach out to and just know that you're not alone. Okay. Single moms, as I'm talking to you right now, um, know that you're not alone uh, in this and that. And then to all moms in general, know that you're not alone and that sometimes it just feels good to know that I'm not crazy and there's somebody else who feels <laughs> the same way. Right. Yes, so right. that's why I come on and talk about this just to normalize our feelings. I also want to give big ups to the dads out there. Yeah. I know we do it a lot of talking about moms um, because we yeah, do have a lot true. of moms, right? But I do want to give big ups to the dads, yeah. especially for our what we call SAHD dads, our stay at home dads mm -hmm. who um, they're used to the kids going to school during the day, maybe. And then just having the kids in the afternoons while moms are at work. But I want to give big ups, uh, props to my husband because he's done an excellent job um, being um, daddy teacher and daddy everything while mommy's at work. Um, and But I want to give big ups to the dads. I don't think we give enough credit to the dads out, yeah. yeah. dad out there as well. And dads know too that it's it's okay and you're not alone and there are other dads who are going through what you're going through mm -hmm. and that we are all in this together, that we all have to find a way to support each other. Um, yeah. And that if you have questions, if you need just a woosah moment, you know, take mm -hmm. them with the kids, uh, you know, get them safe somewhere. And if you just need to, to run around the house for a second, you know, do that, do what you got to do. Um, or once the kids go to bed, you know, woosah, like Trey said, go ahead and take a bath or something, but do something <laughs> for yourself because self-care is not selfish. And right now right, right. we have to take care of ourselves and we have to take care of each other. Um, I just want to tell everyone, be kind to yourself. Yeah. Okay? yeah. yeah. Kids. Absolutely time to yourself though and that's that's what i want to say um if you guys want to follow me on social media i'm on all social media platforms instagram twitter uh facebook at dr nicole d-o the d-r-n-i-c-o-l-e-d-o -E um, as well as dr nicole d-o.com all right dr nicole amina says uh, we truly need your help could you all do this more often she said it's so beneficial thank you all for your help god bless you all well amina all three of them gave you their contact information please reach out to them buy uh their books and uh um, we're here for you whatever you need girl i'd love to do it again i mean this is such great great information. Like I said, it's just so practical. But I think sometimes when we get caught up in the hustle bustle, the hecticness of the day of our lives, we forget the simple things, which is just be loving, just be gentle, just be kind, you know, uh, mm -hmm. do what you would want done to you, you know, mm -hmm. don't react, but act out of out of love and uh, compassion. And those are just such simple practices that um, we should practice. And Dr. Alicia, I know you do ch children, adolescents, and adults. This is what we should bring to all of our relationships. Absolutely. All of our relationships, especially now, because we're all dealing with the same thing all over the world, mm -hmm. you know? You know, so ladies, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been just such a, a great conversation and um, I, I really appreciate your expertise. Uh, as we leave, I typically leave with an excerpt from Jesus Calling. So if you'll um, just wait a moment and uh, please listen if, you, if you'd like. Uh, today's Jesus Calling on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> I guess you can have a Jesus calling with your margarita. I don't know, <laughs> but um, he turned water into wine. Yes, he did. He did. He did. He did. This is true. It's Not in the, in the margaritas, but I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> it says, "Come to me for all that you need. Come into my presence with thanksgiving, for thankfulness opens the door to my treasures. When you are thankful, you affirm the central truth." that I am good and I am God. I am light to whom sh there is no darkness at all. The assurance that I am entirely good meets your basic needs for security. Your life is not subject to the whims of a sin-stained deity. Relax in the knowledge that the one who controls your life is totally trustworthy. Come to me with confident expectation. There is nothing you need that I cannot provide. Those of us who are believers, uh, we just need to rest assured 
that even in these troubling times, God is still in control. And he reminds us of us every single day. I was going to ask Juju to pray, but he took my phone and he's gone. Him and <laughs> him and that boy and Gecko and Owlet, PJ Mask. <laughs> so, we had those people. Those oh, girl, yeah. So uh, thank you, ladies, so much for the information. Thank you. Uh, Beverly King says, thank you, ladies. Great job, ladies. Yeah, this was such a great conversation. Uh, don't forget tomorrow on Coping with COVID, we're going to talk with some people from Prisma Health here in Columbia, South Carolina. Dr. Jim Ellis is going to update us on even more symptoms of uh, the coronavirus and also the new mutant strain of the coronavirus. That's right. It's something else. And the additional testing sites here in South Carolina. That's coming up tomorrow. On Friday, we'll talk to uh, Dr. Baron Davis with Richland School District too. He's gonna tell us what their plans are for celebrating seniors and also how the new school year is gonna look a little bit different. And then on Saturday, we're gonna talk to five hairstylists and barbers of all nationalities on if they are ready to open up their establishment to clients and how this has affected them. All of that and so much more coming up this week on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Again, thank you, ladies. This has been an amazing conversation and uh, I appreciate you so much. All of you, be careful, be safe, and stay blessed. Have a good night.